Howdy guys, Kirk and family here with Kirk Giordano Plaster and today we're at a shopping center. What we're prepared to show you folks how we repair this is, first of all guys, imagine this whole pond here filled with uh, a thousand ducks, a hundred geese, uh, alligator heads that are opening and closing and a waterfall cascading over this bowl here, the Ramada Bowl I believe it's called in an infinite style where it looks like a sheet of water. At the very end, we'll show you that. But of course, all the maintenance work has got to be done. Maintenance on a pool like this or a pond is incredible. How do I know? I built one. We did a video on it like six years ago. We built a uh, pond just like it. We had the cutest ducks. And I'll tell you something about those cute ducks. They're a lot of work. So here, I can enjoy all those cute ducks. And I have to clean up after them. So that's a big thing. Anyhow, I'll show you what we got and why. In order to fix something, you've got to know why it happened. Uh, we got water cascading off of this Ramada Bowl. I believe that's what it's called. And it's just deteriorating. We're talking 30 years of water. The water comes and it, it hits the styrofoam. This is, hear that sound? That's styrofoam. Styrofoam. Concrete. Concrete. Styrofoam. 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 So what we did is, when we first got here, the fellas here, they, the maintenance fellas, they, I think they did about a thousand thirty-gallon bags of debris to clean up after all the geese, the ducks, and all that jazz. And they pressure washed this. Why? Because there's about an eighth of an inch of moss here. We just pressure washed it, of course, too, because I don't know. I don't. I, nothing adheres to dust. And what we're doing today is. We are simply going to repair all this styrofoam. I'll walk you through it real quick because it's, it's quite simple if you know what you're doing. And how much styrofoam have I hung in my life? Thousands and thousands of pieces. Over here, we'll start at the beginning. This is for you folks who are going to do, you know, nobody's going to have a pond like this that they're going to be uh, repairing. However, styrofoam is kind of flimsy unless you know how to do it right. This styrofoam here, they didn't put a cement backing on it, so these lights right here just ate it right up. Typical, it's normal. Why is this is still intact? So what we're going to do is apply bonding agents and fill this. You can fill it. We're going to fill it with cementitious materials, which will make it twice as strong as that. All of these scuppers, originally we were going to, they wanted them off, but they decided against it because they are quite pretty. And when the water is coming out of here and that bowl, what an attraction. We'll go over here and I'll show you something like, say, this scupper here. They're saying, gee whiz, Kirk, they're kind of wiggling. I said, well, gee, that's all the water coming out of here. It failed under here. Can you see way up there, Jay? That's way up there where we got a big gap in there. So we're going to fill those with concrete. Stucco, same thing. This stuff here, what we're going to do is we're just going to take hammers, hammers and saws. And Jay already started this. Lou already started this. So... This is how we do this, guys. You just break this off. Generally, what I like to do is score it with a, a sawzall. And we gotta, we got to remove everything that's loose. And once we remove everything that's loose, then we hit it with a pressure washer. Why? Because we're going to put a cementitious bonder that attaches styrofoam to any surface permanently. Plus, the coating on here, you notice how how strong that is. That's a pretty strong coating. For, and this has already been here 30 years with water cascading over it and coming out of these. So this is strong stuff, guys. What we're prepared to do today is continue. We're going to remove all this mold right here. We'll show you a little bit of details, guys, just in case. we got a lot of stucco contractors and a lot of stucco guys who watch what we do. And how does this relate to, say, if you're doing a house with EFIS? It's called EFIS styrofoam. Well, it's all similar. If you can do one, you can do it all. And so we're going to remove all this stuff. And as we remove it, okay, we're, we're going here. Anything that's bad, we repair. Any of this stuff that I pressure washed, and the pressure washer I, I was using was uh, 3,000 PSI, plus I have a turbo tip, which means if I hold it right here, it'll go right through this stucco. Uh, if you touch it, of course, you'll bring your, your bone to the surface. How do I know? I've done it before. Here's what we're doing. What I generally like to do is we find our width. Okay, it's three inch width. I got uh, styrofoam. We got the right width, but I want some in. I want it. I don't want it uh, too full. Otherwise, our bonding agents won't have enough uh, 
power behind them. So we're going to fill the back of this. We're going to take these and put all kinds of bonding agent. We're going to fill this with bonding agent. We're going to put this on here. Then attach it with a few nails so it sets permanently. The heads of the nails will be embedded. Then we coat those because even though they're galvanized nail, you hit it with a hammer, some of the galvanized comes off and they can rust and then it looks like heck. Over here, we're going to continue. Uh, we got the same situation with lights deteriorating this side, but this is how you... There's a lot of ways to do these guys. There's 10, 15 different ways I can do them. The idea is once we do it, it's going to last another, well, these lasted 34 years. It's going to last longer than what these guys have done. Uh, we're going we're gonna to put our um, poly bonds in back of them, repair them, reinforce them, dash them. Then we're going to come back and prime all of this. And we're going to use a product, uh, an acrylic product, and redash everything. Of course, when we get to that stage, we'll show you. Okay, guys, I'm at a stage where we've taken all off of the molds and we pressure wash one more time because what adheres to dust? Nothing. Nothing adheres to dust. Not even this cementitious polybond right here. And this, this stuff sticks to anything. But if there's dust, you'll compromise it. Here's what you do. And how does this relate to, say, molds on your average window? A uh, house, uh, garage, if you want to put surrounds, I'll show you. First thing we got to do is put a lot of this stuff, and we use a few nails. And more importantly than, than using this is the, the mesh tape, which is absolutely necessary also. And if we put too much on here, like I'm putting a lot, that's okay. We just wipe it right off after. Okay, so we get that. We find what we need. We cut it as close as possible. Does it have to be perfect? No. If you're skilled with your tools, you can feather it in. Okay, once we got it like so, now I'm going to pop a couple of these nails in it just, uh, just, to put, just to hold it in. And what these will do is they'll go straight in. You embed them, and they, they're hitting here. I'm going to do a bunch more. But I'll show you the direct route, guys. After this part comes the mesh. What is styrofoam without mesh? A failure. That's what it is. Because without the mesh, it's not going to have the strength. For example, what I'll do is, okay, I've placed, I've placed, um, and it doesn't matter how many, guys, it doesn't matter how many pieces you use, as long as you build it out. And here's the most important thing for styrofoam coatings, guys. It should not be raw. What happens if it's raw? Okay, this is raw. And of course, that was exposed to a light here, which just ate it right up. Our finish under here, I, I turned it backwards, so I have a cement coating on the back of it. That won't happen to this one. But once you got your piece on, it's kind of like sheetrock. You've got to have mesh over every joint. Right here, I don't have any mesh. What would happen? In a year and a half, we would get a hairline crack here. So what I'll do is I'll put some, some mesh or some uh, polybond. And there's a lot of different materials, guys. It doesn't have to be polybond. I just happen to like to use polybond. And then what we do is we, we're tying this in. Why are we tying it in? so that it will adhere not only when this dries it'll be solid here it'll adhere to the wall itself and equally important is we will not get a hairline crack and this technique guys is used for molds world round it doesn't worldwide it doesn't matter again if it's a commercial project like this one or if it's your house as long as you as long as you do this you're okay I'm going to uh, show you one more thing, and then we'll call this part a done deal. I'm going to put some polybond on here. And now what I'll do is I'll just coat this guy right here. Why do we coat it? Get out of there. You get rocks, just get rid of them. We coat it so that we don't get that hairline crack there. Then I'm going to flip this around and attach that like so 
And if you need to bring it out, guys, you can build this stuff up. Polybond, you can build it up uh, a good eighth of an inch. If you really know what you're doing and additives, you can go a little bit more. But that's another story. Anyhow, once, once this piece is on, say for example, then you float it. Do you need to float every one of them? Depends on what you're doing, guys. So what I'll do is I'll take a green sponge float. Green sponge float. Got water in here. That's just water, guys. You close your eyes. And now I want to tie this into here, so I'll pull it upward. I'm just feathering in the joint. And does this texture match? No. This is dash finish. This is a float I'm using, which will bring the aggregate out, but it won't give it a dash finish. That comes... That's another phase, guys. So we, we put this on, boom. And what is the hardest part about doing commercial work, guys? Anybody know? <laughs> yeah. Any of you plasters or contractors know, I'm sure. It's the insurance. You gotta have all kinds of insurances when you're working with commercial properties. Uh, we almost didn't get this one because uh, of insurances I end up having to call my guy who is a broker and say gee whiz do I qualify and if you have to tweak it here tweak it there that's what insurance brokers do what we do is we install stucco so that's the hardest part about uh, commercial work but other than that there's nothing to it commercial residential it's the exact same process uh, so Anyway, you, you see where this is going right here. This is putting back together. And an hour from now, can I come back and float this real heavy and match this? I can. But we're going to show you one more thing before we end this day is how you fill all these holes right here. That comes in a minute. All right, guys, we are at a stage now where we got most of this uh, mold set. What happens if you come to a situation like this where does it make sense to... Take this off and go order some half rounds that are one inch by ten. Not really. Does it make sense to order a radius like this? Not really. How many have I ordered? Thousands. It's just not worth it. I'll show you a quick way to fix this. And by the way, there's about 20, 30 different cements that we use. Uh, we're using a cement here uh, that I just put a bonding agent on the wall. So we have a bonding agent on this wall. Now this particular cement is, it's a Portland based cement, but what makes this a little unique is I went ahead and put some accelerator in here. And what's the accelerator used for? Well that is just, so this sets quick. And so what I'm going to do is make this radius, I could make it a lot faster than tearing it all apart and Go in to replace it. Plus, guess what? Concrete or stucco, cement, plaster is a lot stronger than styrofoam. So we're going to give this the extra heavy duty fix. What comes right here? A lot of ways to do that, guys. I could show you a whole bunch, but I'll just show you the easy way. Put some mud on your bucket. Dip your glove into water. Now my my glove is my hawk so I've got and what I'm doing why am I going over this so many times guys because I've got to fill this I've got to fill voids that I can't even see if I don't fill the voids I can't see then they could come back so I'm pushing in hard I'm pushing in real hard and I'm just there are voids in here that oh Kirk cannot see but I want to make certain that I got them and notice I, I go over it, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it, making my own. Okay, I keep wetting my glove, because if I don't wet my glove, a dry glove is just not going to work. It's going to stick to my dry glove, just like it's sticking inside this mold where it's actually supposed to stick. So I keep putting my glove in there, and we keep making it. Now, again, if you guys... And I, I do run across this. Jay and I just uh, did a job where they had a lot of molds, and it was homeowner. It was a condo, actually, and they had intricate molds that it would take too long to order them. So what we did is 
uh, we pressure washed them and did something very similar to this. Now we got them under here too. Same, same deal applies guys. We just match them. Don't worry about anything that falls because gravity is going to drop that stuff down and that's okay. So again, I make the curve. I use my glove, make the radius at the bottom. And then I have a couple other things like this big old hole right here. We can just do like so. And again, this is not polybond because polybond, which we are adhering these molds, you can go about an eighth of an inch thick, possibly even uh, a quarter. But what happens? It will crack. It will shrink and crack like an egg. The last thing I got is some details under here. Now if I switch hands, that'll make it a lot easier. So we go with the left hand. All right, we'll take it here and we put it on. No such thing as a one-handed plaster, guys. And I can't see it, but I can feel it. All I have to do is feel the, the mold, guys. And I take my glove, wash it off again, and I got this part at the bottom where I can't see. I don't need to look. I just need to keep going over it, over it, and push it in because if I miss an area, then when that water starts cascading down here, it's going to get in there. We don't want that. The last piece I have is right here. I'm going to wet the glove again. Why are we wetting the glove? We're wetting the glove up to this point here because that's all I can wet. If I wet here, I'm going to soak my own hand. We don't want that either. So we finished putting a little piece on. A little piece right here. I'm going to go back and forth, back and forth. I need to make sure that that hole is completely filled. It's kind of like when you caulk something. You're doing caulking, you want to fill the hole. and Otherwise, it'll shrink up. And the next day, you'll have to redo it. Is it a big deal to redo it? No. But I'm here right now, so I just want to do this once. Okay, now, if you guys are like me, and you put it on like that, last thing you got to do, and notice this is a lot faster, it's a lot stronger, and it is acceptable. Okay, I take my green sponge float. A couple guys said, hey, Kirk, we got blue sponge floats. They work too, guys. The red ones are really, really fine for brick cleaning grout, so they don't bring out the aggregate. This is a heavy dash, so I want to bring the aggregate out. Remember that aggregate? That's a fancy word for sand. So what now is I'm giving it the same finish here because, again, this is just a preliminary step. We still have got to prime this and then dash it. So... I want it easy for when I get ready to do that. I take my float, add it on its edge. Boom, match that. Now here where I just spread, I want the heavy finish. So if you want a heavy finish, guys, you got to use a lot of water. And when the sponge float gets full, that means it's going to drag it all over the place. You got to clean the sponge. Like right now, uh, I want the heavy finish, so I use a lot of water. If I use a little water, then it's a fine finish. Very, very fine. Now I'm going to get the radius. Can't get the radius if the sponge float is full of mud because it'll drag that radius all over town. Okay, now we just eyeball this guy. And what happens if I got to put a little bit more like right here? No problem. I put a little bit more. Okay, so that is the mold on the upper. I just beautiful okay and this is going to get dashed what is dash that's where you take a hand hopper or your hand and you throw a finish on all right let me get back to the radius now the radius is a little bit more tricky a little more tricky but we can handle it we want to go upward with a lot of water on this upward squeeze that in now we clean the the mud off it because again I think this is my third time saying this, but the float, if it's full of cement, will drag. And there's no way that, no matter how much skill you got, you're going to be able to match it if your float is too full of stucco. Okay, now here, you just kind of eyeball it. Look at it and get that guy just right. What happens if it's just right, not just right? Do it again. Not the end of the world. Okay, we get that. We come in. To get the corner, 
then we float the, the, the absolute face of it now. And why do I use so much water besides, besides getting, bringing the sand or aggregate to the surface? This makes it stronger, guys. If the more water you use, the stronger it becomes. But if you use too much water, obviously it just falls right off. Uh, Got to use the right amount of water. Okay, so that's about right there. Make it pretty, make it pretty. And that will accept the next coat. And this I have, <laughs> I told Lou, I said, give me some mud that within five minutes, it's as hard as a rock. Uh, so within five minutes, this is going to be hard. I won't be able to mess with it anymore. So I got five whole minutes. How many do I need? Four. So we're done with it. And when this sets up another five minutes, you see I have a hole here. No big deal. I give this another few minutes, then any more holidays. I'm going to repair when I repair a few other holidays like this guy here. Anyhow, next time you see us, we will be dashing. All right, guys, we're going to spray some finish on it, match the existing dash. That way, when we come back to do the color, it makes it a lot easier for us. And we, we want to bring it back to what they originally had. Simple. <laughs> Easy peasy. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Easy. Easy. All right. Okay, the fun stuff. All right. This is just for strength. Just for strength. I want this to be a lot stronger than what they originally had. That water runoff just beat it up. That's okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, now that we've matched the finish, and it's Friday evening. Friday evening. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Did I miss something? Oh man. All right, Friday evening. We can sit in traffic for an hour and a half, or we can go right here and have a drink. <laughs> I'm buying. We'll go in here and have a pint like we used to say in England. You're on, Mike. You've been so helpful. You got yourself some whiskey. We'll see you when we show you how to do the dash. The color dash, that is. Not just the... This is just for strength because we got to give it more strength than they originally had. Otherwise, we're the bad guys. So when we get ready to do the color, we'll show you that too. Okay, guys. It's been a couple weeks since we've been back here. Now we're applying a primer and then we're going to use a hand hopper and spray on a dash finish. We are using Stucco Flex. Why? Because I'm responsible for this product. And this is going to get cascaded with waterfall into infinite pull. So we have to have one of the best products known to man, sold worldwide. And it's actually architects, engineers, and developers use this on many high rises. You guys see a building that 30 stories high, two blocks long, more than likely it's StuccoFlex. So this StuccoFlex product here, like all of them, you got to use the primer that's recommended by it. And so because this is new right here, uh, we just shot this on a couple of weeks, we are applying it heavy. And then we're going to apply the primer over the entire thing once this is done. And when we are done with that, we're going to show you how we apply this StuccoFlex. 
And again, the stucco flex, there's a lot. If you go online and you type in stucco flex, you'll see a lot of videos where the guys have sheets like this. And um, they'll flex them like this. This is not stucco flex. You see how that cracked? Stucco flex will bend because it's 100% acrylic. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of companies put silica sand and polymers. Uh, they don't do that. They use marble. Uh, aggregate and so it doesn't rust there's so many benefits uh, I couldn't even fill this video with why we're using this um, I've got to guarantee this for 20 30 years so I'm going with the best there is anyway what Dan and I Lou and my other buddy over there are doing is we are priming this this is just stage one we're in the hot sun so this primer is sucking up quick and when we get to everything primed, can you see it all? When we get everything primed, then we're going to dash it. Then we're going to come back and we're going to uh, do these half rounds here with another uh, Stuccoflex product. We'll show you that part when we get to it. Okay, guys, we'll show you how to do the dash now. Dan's going to give me some mud. And earlier I said this was a 100% acrylic. Jay corrected me because he's a licensed stucco guy too. It's, yeah, it's 100% acrylic. Acrylic polymer. I forgot about the polymer. It has about a third more polymers than anybody else. Uh, okay. So, what we're doing is dashing. This, you cannot stay clean, guys. People say, hey, Kirk, you stay pretty clean. Nobody stays clean dashing. Dashing is messy work. I've dashed whole houses by hand. I've dashed whole houses with a hopper. So this right here, piece of cake. And when, when, when I start to go high is when I, the hopper starts to go down. Here's a tip guys, now that the hopper is going down and you don't want to burn all your strength out, now you can do the top. Because there's hardly any cement left in it. And there is no finish that I'm aware of that looks more like traditional stucco than this stucco flex. It is the best elastomeric finish there is. See how this works, guys? Pretty simple. This, generally, I'll do three coats. But because I've already got my color coverage blending one into another, I'm going to do two coats. See, again, now it's almost empty. That's why I'm going to do my top here. I don't want to lift up a whole hopper for us like 80 pounds. All right, Dan. There's more mud. I want to go ahead and finish most of this side off, then I'll come back and show you the second coat. All right, guys, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Nothing to it, the second coat now. I'm good. I'm, first one is for color coverage, mainly, and for strength. Now I'm just giving it the exact same texture. Now we're gonna rip off the plastic and do the red. All right, guys. We have, this is our fifth bucket of mud. Jay and I had a little inside bet there. He said I'd use four. I said I'm going to use five. And he said, well, how, how thick are you going to go right here? And I thought, water's going to be cascading down here. And just pulling this out, it pulled out the last product. I don't know if it lasted 30 years. I doubt it. Probably 10. And they had to redo it. My stuff's going to last 30 because this stucco flex is some hard stuff. So I'm going to finish this out. We're going to allow this to dry. We'll take this off we'll finish this inside and we're almost done all right guys let's show you what we've done here uh we've done the reverse we covered the outside and dashed on the inside this terracotta that's what they originally had we just spruced it all up don't go away guys because jason and i are going to come back here and show you the pond by the way guys jason makes a couple bucks on these video but me I don't make any money, but I get something that's far beyond measurement in money, and that's recognition. Anyhow, Jason signed us up for Amazon Affiliates now, which means you can go on either one of our websites and or the description of all the videos, a little pop-up thing there, 
and he has put links to all the tools we purchased. I do this actually because I love doing this stuff. I know the answers to almost all those 25,000 or 30,000 questions folks from YouTube has asked me. So we want to share where we get all the tools with you folks and hopefully I can make a couple bucks on that too. By the way folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates, so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below, and also if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching, and from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.